Good afternoon. Hello and welcome. This is November IAM Online. Welcome to the Edgerome Logs Demo of Grafana with IAM webinar. If that's what you were hoping uh, to find today, you are in the right place. We appreciate you joining us for this afternoon's webinar, which is part of the monthly webinar series focused on identity and access management brought to you by In Common and Internet 2. Um, as we get underway, um, I want to remind you uh, of a couple of items. We, this event is being recorded and you will receive both the recording and the slides via email if you registered for today's event. We'll be taking questions and comments live using the Zoom Q&A function. So please um, send those messages during the presentation using Zoom Q&A. You're welcome to post messages and comments in the chat but we will be relying primarily on the Zoom Q&A function when we get to the Q&A portion of today's webinar. Um, once again, we will be recording the webinar and you will receive the recording and the slides. And they'll also be posted uh, on our YouTube channel for I Am Online, as well as the In Common website. Having said that, um, I'm happy to turn the uh, virtual podium over to today's moderator, Brett Bieber, Assistant Vice President for IT Client Services at the University of Nebraska and Chair of the Edgerome U.S. Advisory Committee to give us some additional context and introduce today's presentation. Brett. Thank you, April. Greetings, everyone. So great to be with you. Also for another, uh, another edition of I Am Online, where we talk about monthly uh, topics in the identity and access management space. And this is one that I'm really excited about. Uh, as April mentioned, I'm um, at the University of Nebraska, but my role that's kind of relevant to what this uh, discussion topic is, is the chair of the Edgerum US Advisory Committee. And um, you may recall a session maybe about a year ago where Sarah Jeans talked about enhancing the Edgerum infrastructure to enable the next 1000 subscribers. And I actually think we're we're at that, or maybe we've surpassed that now, but there's been a lot of work going on behind the scenes, both on the radius infrastructure side to support this critical infrastructure that we rely on for wireless roaming, but also in what you'll hear about today, a lot of uh, work has been going on behind the scenes with some of the uh, ITEP components and uh, how the ed Edgerum um, components are built into the Federation Manager and some of the features that have been incorporated there. So I'm really excited to uh, join with you all today and, and visit with this, this group of individuals that will talk about um, the work that they've been doing. And so I'm going to turn it over to Matt, actually, with Provision IAM to introduce the rest of the speakers and get us started here. So Matt, welcome. All right. Thanks, Brett. Glad to be here. Um, <clears throat> to just start, I just want to introduce everyone. So I'm Matt Groudon from Provision IAM. Uh, with me today is uh, Stefan Fox, also from Provision IM, and we have Slavik Litzhammer from Evolvium, and then we have Johnny Lasker and Paul Kasky from Internet2. And as Brett uh, described, we're here to talk about some work that the R3 organizations have done together um, over the, the last several months, and that kind of culminated um, right there before uh, the TechX conference just, uh, I guess, a few months ago now. And um, it's, it's really exciting because it's, it's helping to automate the onboarding and, and offboarding. And when you're growing edgy Roam, um, that's certainly something that is needed, but we're also able to do that while maintaining confidentiality. And uh, Johnny will talk about that a little bit. But what I'm really excited about is really, this is, uh, can be thought of as a small case study for really specifically two of the TAP components coming together with some other technology to, to do this work of, of automation and enforcing confidentiality, um, specifically Grouper and Midpoint. So if anyone in your organization is interested in seeing a case study of how those two components can work together, this is a recording uh, you might want to share with them. All right, so let's talk about the agenda. So we're going to start with um, Johnny speaking about why do we need to do this and who does it benefit. We'll get into some of those design goals. Um, and then I'll turn it over to Stefan. He's going to talk about the Grafana connector um, that Provision IAM built uh, on top of the base connector framework. And then uh, Slavic will be talking about the, the grouper connector. And also, um, I would say a newer feature in Midpoint um, with the resource configuration wizard. Midpoint continues to make improvements in his uh, user interface there. So excited to see that. 
we'll demonstrate all of those things to you and then we'll wrap up with uh, Q&A. So with that being said, uh, Johnny, I'm going to turn it over to you. Great, thanks, Matt. Let's see, I'm just getting all, there I am, hello. Uh, <laughs> all right, good to be here, thank you. So uh, let's talk about why we did this and who it benefits uh, for starters. Um, so originally, you know, we, we we had a need to help our users get to the, the data they need to get to. Um, so our users of the Federation Manager that have an Edgerome administrator role, um, they have a lot of access to different things they can do to set up their Edgerome configuration, but they really benefit from a secure way to get to the logs. Um, because we run the national infrastructure, we can expose more data than uh, you could normally see. Um, we can we can show you uh, unanswered queries, uh, rejected connections, connections marked as dead. There, there are things that the national infrastructure could show that a, a local uh, setup would not be able to, to know. It just maybe wouldn't get back to them, um, but it, it definitely lands at the national level. So we needed to make sure we could, we could serve them. Um, going up a level, uh, the Trusted Access Platform TAP implementers uh, well, if you look at the roster of people we're, we're, who are about to talk, you can see um, the, the benefits of collaboration. You know, when we can hook these things up together, you're going to see a benefit. Um, Grafana is a nice open source uh, tool that we chose because it has, uh, it's, it's SAML compatible, it's got plug and play um, uh, options for data visualization, but also, you know, it would play well with the other tools that we, we already have. So that way we figured this is a nice way to show how these things can, can work together. Um, going up one more level is if you're a federation or national roaming operator, you're, you know, it's gonna be good for you to help your, your users have some self-service troubleshooting. And you don't have to be um, you know, the, the entity of your country to, to see this benefit. I mean, you could be any, any entity that has an application or applications and users and you need to figure out how do I provision these people? How do I deprovision them? Um, and we've seen that a, a reduction in support tickets, the more we can enable our users. Um, and that can help you um, not only start further in the conversation when it is time to say, hey, what's going on? But um, you know, maybe if there are less of those conversations, you can focus on other innovations. Uh, next slide, please. Thanks, all right. So um, our design goals. So my area, I focus a lot on the Federation Manager. Um, and when I started, uh, well, and still to this day, there, there are different roles. Um, you know, different users have different roles. But when, when I started, um, some of those roles had different doors that they would go through to log in. Um, and that can be challenging to keep everyone, uh, to keep everything going if everyone has different ways to log in. Um, it really came to a head when we were, um, looking at bringing in the Edgerome service into the Federation Manager and the calculation of, okay, we're going to basically double our population. Do we want to ask all the new people um, to set a username and password that may or may not be how they log in a year from now? And we said, mm, how about we go ahead and pour a big glass of our own champagne and say, let's, let's connect the IAM infrastructure that we have to the Federation Manager, let's bind users by an EduPerson principal name. Let's let's really do it. Um, let's get our let's let's do what we say we sh should be done. Uh, so we we brought everyone in that way um, through the IAM enrollment uh, workflow. Uh, and the people that have come in and done that, uh, they the benefit of that is um, then they are a known subject and grouper, and then um, we can we can put them in special uh, groups that are identified by what we call an inst ID. That inst ID that's in grouper happens to be the same inst ID that we tag all the traffic with. So uh, as we as you see down this path here, we can use grouper to start start to um, organize. You know what access someone can have. The midpoint can feed off of that, and then the Grafana connector can say, okay, I know what to do. Um, you know, in a general sense, these these groups exist, and we could we could make them mean a lot of things. But then we got very specific about Grafana and said, let's say uh, this person exists and they have this um, association to this organization. What happens next? Grafana the the Grafana connector has to figure that out, and it 
decide it makes a bunch of decisions and figures out how to get that user or that org into Grafana so that logs can be seen, or maybe it's time to take them out. Um, okay, next slide, please. So this is um, a diagram. I'm not the best plant UML plant UMLer, but uh, <laughs> but I wanted to show uh, just a visual here. So our Edurome um, administrators are very independent in, in the Federation Manager. Um, there's a lot of things they can do for themselves. Um, once they get going, um, you know, once they exist, they can, there's testing tools, um, they can publish on demand, um, but a really nice thing is they can manage their own roster. Um, so once one edge room, once one user with an edge room administrator role exists, they can add others or they can remove others. Um, and so let's say uh, a role is added to a user. Uh, as you can see here, the it would start in the Federation Manager um, and then that data gets uh, makes its way to Grouper, um, gets to the, the Grouper connector that gets it to midpoint and then Grafana the Grafana connector can see uh, what's in midpoint and decide, all right, what do I need to do with this person? Um, as I mentioned before, there's those inst IDs. So what's, let's say this person, um, you know, passes all of our tests. Uh, they have all the attributes we think we, we want. Um, they're from uh, an organization that does not exist in Grafana yet. So uh, it'll make the decision. We need to make that organization. We need to bind a data source to that organization. That's the inst ID. Uh, we need to add um, an association. Well, we need to make this user and we need to associate that user to the org so that when they come in, they can see their org's data and just that and nothing else. Um, this supports multiple views. We have our support organizations that have um, uh, more administrative, we call them Edgerome support organization administrators. And um, they have they inherit an Edgerome administrator role in any of their constituents so they can go and look at a number of uh, of sub org or constituent uh, activities. So that's really helpful that they can go see that and they can help um, you know, make things work. So um, with that, I'll hand it back to you, Matt. All right, thank you, Johnny. Um, again, it's great to hear how Internet2 is, I think you put it, um, drinking a glass of your own champagne and utilizing these tap components, you know, really for the automation and really to just to help the whole process and administration of, of Edge Room there. So thank you for sharing that. Um, so now we're going to talk um, a little bit about uh, some of the tap components that made that happen, uh, specifically a connector um, that was built uh, by Provision IM and Stefan Fox specifically, um, that being the Grafana connector. So Stefan, I will turn it over to you. Okay. So yes, um, it's true. We did get an opportunity to build the Grafana connector for Midpoint. And uh, it was based on a base connector framework that we developed and it's open source. Um, the framework is used to simplify and accelerate the development of midpoint resource connectors that allow you to provision identity and access control for your institution systems. In this particular case, the Grafana connector allows for provisioning of Grafana users, Grafana organizations, data sources, dashboards, and organizational preferences. Um, if you want to get more information about our open source connectors, we have some links down below that you can um, check out at your leisure. Next slide, please. So here's some detail about what we did with the Grafana connector. Um, as you can see on the left-hand side, typically what happens is that users and groups with members are imported into Midpoint. And Midpoint uses that information to outbound to different end systems. In this particular case, we're talking about Grafana through a Con ID framework. And that Con ID framework, um, for those folks who are actually into the development of um, Midpoint connectors, can tend to be uh, a little bit on the complicated sides. So there's a lot of redundancy. And so what we've done at Provision IAM is that we Put, put on, we tacked on an abstraction layer that really just simplifies what you have to do. Um, in, in the Grafana case, we created three different object types. Uh, there's a Grafana user, the Grafana organization, and the Grafana data sources. 
And the data source does double duty with um, dashboards and the organizations do, do, does double duty with um, organizational preferences. And we use this, um, the invocator that's part of the object type to interface with the Grafana REST API. Now, the REST API allows us to control a lot of different things that Grafana can do. And one, the, the end point that we're interested in here was the Grafana Loki um, data source, which is used by the Edge Room system. But the connector actually has multiple functionality. You can um, use it to control other types of data sources. And I think if you look at the documentation, Grafana actually supports, uh, I think maybe 20, a large number of different data sources. Um, can we go to the next slide, please? So here's a little bit more detail about what the provision IAM base connector features are. Um, one of the things where we've done is we've built a configuration object from a YAML file. Basically, if you, you're familiar with Midpoint, there's a config, connector configuration and you can create that configuration with a YAML file. And we recompile it into a configuration object for you. Uh, we built in authentication support for any kind of endpoint that you want to use. There's JWT, um, AAuth2, you can use tokens, you can use basic authentication, and that's all part of what you specified in the configuration object. Uh, we have in it a driver, which is extendable to your specific need. But the driver basically dry, um, manages prod operations, which is you know create, read, update, or delete. And um, in order to really get to the endpoint, we have what we call op prod operators, which are embedded in an invocator. And the invocator is something that you would create for each object type. Um, some of the things that are there is we have built-in REST support with JSON conversion. So um, with the data model for the endpoints, for example, for a user, the REST API may have a data model for a user and you will compile that. And um, the invocator basically does all the translation. It authenticates, it sends the data, it receives the data, it handles the data and then sends it back to midpoint through what we call a schema adapter. So um, here's a link at the end here, which talks about the um, exclamation labs base connector. And you can find all the documentation there. You can use it to create your own connectors if necessary. With that, I'll hand it back to Matt. All right, thanks, Stefan. Um, you know, one thing that I, I think is interesting with what you talked about is, is how to create the connector. You mentioned it. They can be challenging sometimes, um, and so it's. I think it's really great how you have um, made the base connector framework available to the community. Because I know in, in the seat that I sit in, I often hear you know connectivity to various systems being a barrier to entry, regardless of the IDA tool. Obviously, we're specifically today talking about midpoint, but you know connector development is something um, that can be done. I think more easily um, than what um, sometimes people may perceive it to be. And certainly the base connector framework um, helps with that. Um, and speaking of connectors, Slavic is gonna um, talk next about some improvements that were made uh, fairly recently to, to the Gruber connector. And he's also gonna talk about um, that resource wizard um, interface as well. So Slavic, I will turn it over to you. Thank you, Matt. Indeed, when, when we were building this demo, we also needed to connect Bitpoint with Grouper, as Johnny already introduced. And back then, there was a new Grouper connector being developed by Volveum. So we decided to try it straight ahead for this demo, and we did it very successfully. This new connector was designed mostly to simplify the existing connector, legacy one because before it was very complicated to integrate Midpoint and Grouper and people were relying heavily on examples. So with the new approach, which was utilizing both improvements on the Grouper and Midpoint side, actually we designed it together with Evolveum and the Grouper team. We managed to do a connector which is really simple and behaves like any other connector. And also we were able to improve performance 
and also the latency by a lot. So it was also successfully tested in the demo. And when we build it, we of, of course added some new features like support for attribute extension. And to make it as easy for users as possible, we also use the new resource wizard that I will introduce later in this talk. On the next slide, I will show you the schema, how the grouper connector works. And it's really similar to the connector that was presented by Stefan, but here we have grouper and midpoint. So starting from the left in grouper, you will configure a special provisioner for midpoint, which will put all the data that you need from grouper to an intermediary PostgreSQL database. And the data there are accounts representing subject in midpoint, uh, in the grouper, sorry, and entitlements, which are groups in a grouper. Then this grouper connector can read these those objects and through the ConID framework, make it available in midpoint. And then user can decide what should happen in midpoint with those objects. So usually you will just map them to existing users and you will synchronize the groups as org units, for example, and then you can do whatever you wish with them. So on the next slide, I'm moving to the resource, resource wizard. And this is not that a new feature anymore, but it's constantly being improved. So we start with this, with midpoint 4.6, but it was improved in four, midpoint 4.7 and also in current version 4.8. And there were many improvements, so I recommend you to check it out and I will show you later in the demo. So what you can do with this wizard, you can use configuration templates. So for example, when you are getting the connector, maybe you will get already prepared template, which will simplify the configuration for you and make some things pre-filled so you can just check the settings and use it. Or if you are connecting multiple instances of the same system, you can build your own template. And again, everything that is shared, put it in the template and only change particular details for each connected instance. Second thing that we can do that needs to be supported by the connector and both connectors that we, that we introduced today support this is configuration discovery. Basically, we are relying on the connector to provide additional information directly from the system and help you by suggesting configuration parameters when you are connecting the system. And then this is all bundled in the nice step-by-step -step guided configuration. This is the wizard itself, which lets you very easily to configure the whole resource, meaning connecting a new system completely in the user interface. So with that, I conclude my part of the presentation and I will move to the demo. So I will just share my screen. And now I'm using the internet to workbench instance on which I will quickly demonstrate you how a connection of new resource might look like. But usually you need to put a lot of details so I will simplify it a bit. So I'm starting by creating a new resource and I will decide not to use a template but rather start from a scratch. So to demonstrate all the options of the wizard. And I will use it on the Grafana connector that we that we are showing today. So first I need to put just simple information. So name of the connector, then I will move to the configuration part. And in the beginning, I just need to put URL of the service and the authorization information. This will enable midpoint to make initial connection to the system and then the connector starts communicating with the systems and you can see it already pre-filled most of the items for me and for the others it can even help me to recommend some options if I, if I need to. Let's say I'm happy with this what was suggested so I can then continue to the next step of the wizard and now it's recognized several type of objects and asking me what object I want to process. And in the real case scenario, I would probably want to select all of them, but let's simplify it for now and let's select users only. So now I will create the resource and then I can continue with the wizard with next step of configuration. 
for example, to configure object types recognized by midpoint. So this will be our users. It will be accounts on, on, the, on the Grafana. And now I can specify some details like filtering and so on. I don't need to do such a special case here. And now I will just explain what will be the corresponding object and midpoint. So in this case, it will be midpoint user. And I might even select some of the archetype, let's say person. So I have this simple configuration right now. And now I can define, for example, the attributes mappings. Grafana connector is primarily outbound. So I switch to outbound mappings. And now I can map the individual attributes. Let's say I will start with an email address. So in midpoint, and you will you will see the wizard is helping me to find the name of the correct attributes. The expression I can even modify it if I want. In this case, email probably want to pass it as is. And now I'm looking for resource attributes. And again, you will see it's through the connector, it's offering me what is available there. So I will map it to the email. And in this matter, I can add additional mappings for all the attributes I want to provision from midpoint to the target. For the purpose of the demo, I will show just a single one. Then I can move to the synchronization part. And here we need to specify what should happen on a different state of the existing users in Grafana. If it's empty, I don't have to do anything. But if I'm expecting some existing users to be there, I might want to define, for example, what should happen to orphan accounts if they are not matched to anything in midpoint. For example, we might want to, we might want to, let's say, uh, delete the resource object. So let's say orphan accounts shouldn't be there at all. If you find any, just delete it immediately. Or I can decide something else, including tr trying some advanced logic to match them or just leave them be for a moment. So when I'm happy, again, I can put multiple rules there for, for the correlation and for the synchronization that I have correlation which which is telling midpoint based on which attributes it should correlate existing accounts, for example, name, email, whatever you have there, some identifiers. And I can go for different capabilities, activations, how credentials are matched, but I want to show it in this demo. At the end, I can even preview the data. I have only one account there now, so I'm happy with that. And when I when I'm when I'm done with everything, I can just go check my resource, and I'm ready to work with that. And what is really nice, starting with midpoint 4.8, I can even re-enter the wizard. So if I, for example, check my accounts, I can easily, let's say, go back to mappings check what I already have there and then add some rules and same for any other rules. So with that approach, you can easily connect new resource. The connector itself is helping you by recommending you the option. And when you are done, you can, you can start using it or even automate the whole configuration. So with that, I'm concluding my demo. All right, thank you, Slavik. Um... I thought that was a great demonstration um, in a lot of ways, but I think um, primarily because of the improvements in the interface, you know, speaking from a personal perspective, my midpoint journey began back in 2017. So a lot of things were done in configuration files, XML, et cetera, et cetera. And, and the amount of configuration things that you can do now in midpoint um, through an interface, I think is is really great. And, and I hope is going to help with the, really the skills gap and talent, you know, um, gap that we have out there in the marketplace right now. So hopefully um, that'll help some of us, you know, hire some some engineers or junior engineers that, that can use a tool like Midpoint and, and get more done in the interface uh, versus relying on XML like um, like it maybe was previously. So it's so really, really nice. Thank you. So now I'm going to ask Johnny to demonstrate uh, really the, I guess the whole and Salada, as they say, um, for Edgy Room. So, uh, Johnny, you're up. Thank you. All right, let's go back to my screen here. Okay, so I wanted to show you uh, in our dev environment, um, this is 
a version of me. This is a test user. <laughs> um, like I said, the Edgerome administrators can um, <clears throat> manage their own rosters, but for expediency, I wanted to show you um, something that more more likely an uh, an admin would do, uh, like a, one of our staff would would be adding someone to a different org. But I'll just do it because um, to, just to show you how it would work. So this user um, has one role. Uh, an Edgerome administrator with Duke. Uh, it's active. If you look at it, the same person in Grouper, it's sitting there. Um, this is, I thought this might be interesting too, that this is sort of a, this is what gets put into Grouper. And within here are um, members of these different stems. Um, but so right now, this one, this person only has one association. Um, and if I was to be that person, I'd see, oh, well, I can only do one thing. And if I go here, I'm, I'm allowed to see Duke. Uh, this is our dev environment, so we don't have any of Duke's activity here. But that's what, you know, they would, the experience would be, they would come here and they would say, okay, let me look at my Duke stuff. Um, so if we were to, sorry, I have to jump around a little bit. Um, if I was to add a role to this person, um, let's let's say that they've been working with Yale and it's time to make it official. Let's let them uh, help Yale out. Um, so now they're going to have an active role in Yale as well. Um, so two roles. Um, so this data is right now only in the Federation Manager, but it's going to make its way across that that um, flow that I was mentioning earlier. So uh, first, the first place I would look, and I'll feverishly uh, hit refresh here, but <laughs> um, we'll, we'll want to see that it gets to Grouper. Um, and it goes pretty quickly, um, but this is the part when we did this in uh, in person. I think it was uh, the part where we took pirate jokes from the audience. I don't need that or expect that today, but um, uh, <laughs> it was talk like a pirate day, I guess, or or it was really close to that day. So um, you got to give yourself a chance to talk like a pirate whenever the calendar says so. Um, so let's see, almost there. I can, I can tell it's, it's, it's on its way. Um, you'll see, we do have this, um, we're starting to add more, uh, human readable, uh, information here, which is something you're going to see very soon. And that will really help, um, when you have a lot of organizations, you're trying to figure out what am I looking at? Um, so let's see, it's, it's, it, <laughs> it's still talk like a pirate day, I guess. Um, let's see. We are really close. Once you see this, it's it's practically over. Um, so let's just hit refresh a little bit more. There it is. Okay, so now Yale is there. And if I was to go to, um, you know, look into the Yale uh, folder, um, I could see who's, you know, that's me. Uh, if there were other people that also had that role, they would be there too. Um, so you could, you know, if you were looking at, wanting to make sure this was working you can look in grouper at the at the um, known subject level or at the group level and you can see what's what's what um but what does the end user see um so they would see another place they could go and then when they get to um our into grafana they'll see now i could go to yale also yay and we don't have yales we don't have data for yale in our dev environment but this is what it would feel like uh, if you could do it. Um, and it works in reverse as well. <laughs> as well. If we were to remove that role, um, you know, shortly after, uh, it would it would basically reconcile it and say, okay, well, that Johnny doesn't belong in the Yale group anymore. So let's take him out and let's send that message across. Um, let's let's let it cascade across. And um, before you know it, um, he can't get to Yale and Grafana. Um, so that was kind of short and sweet, but that, that's, that's the, uh, that's the, what you would see, um, Matt. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Johnny, for, for demonstrating that again, not, um, maybe something super amazing to have see happen in real time, maybe going back to that diagram where, you know, there's a lot of components kind of working together um, to really make that magic happen in the, in the minute or so where you were not going to talk uh, like a pirate, <laughs> but, but happy to see it all come together for the demo today. And uh, with that, I think I'll turn it over to, to Brett for some Q and A, I think. 
That's great. No, thank you everybody for um, sharing uh, the progress that's been made. I, I can speak as a user of this uh, with myself as a, a, a participant in the Edge Room Support Organization program, of which I think we have seven or eight different states now uh, working to roll out Edge Room to K through 12s. You know, there's a lot, as Johnny mentioned, of adding users, uh, new administrators that might be the local admin for that uh, K through 12 school, a school district, and they need to get access to the federation manager to uh, add in their radius server details or any other information about service locations. And so this, what all, what you saw has been just incredible and has really allowed us to scale up Edge of Rome and enable more schools to take advantage of this Wi-Fi access service, which has been fantastic. So I'm really grateful for the team for giving a little bit of a demo of what goes into that and, and how important that is and, and why all of these connections matter between those systems uh, that the team demoed here. So Midpoint, Grouper, um, the Grafana connector and the connector framework that makes it easy to connect to these systems. And then from Johnny's perspective, what does the end user actually see within the Federation Manager? How can they add users and remove users and how all these pieces fit together. It's been really great to watch this and observe and, and see how this has been rolled out and be a participant in that, in just helping to expand Edge Room within the United States. So I'm really grateful for the work that you all uh, have been doing, and I really appreciate that. We do have time now for some questions, and we're taking questions through the Q&A format within the uh, chat. So happy to do that now. Everyone who has a question, uh, for any of the presenters today, please uh, put that in the chat and I'll be happy to moderate here and work to get those questions answered. And while you all are thinking, um, I was thinking that we might also be able to have some folks share about some of the exciting parts that uh, of this project that you kind of witnessed or those really exciting moments. Uh, for me, I, I think it was actually being able to actually get to Grafana in the end and being able to see the logs in the Federation Manager or in the that, uh, National Roaming Operator Infrastructure uh, to be able to see my own logs for my institution and help troubleshoot another org uh, with some radius configuration details that they were struggling with. So for me, all the work that you saw behind the scenes supported my ability to help out one of those school districts that was having trouble with their configuration. And so um, that was one of the exciting moments for me was to see how all this comes together and to be able to actually help somebody in the end. Anyone else have anything that they want to add around the exciting moments that you had working on this project? Yeah, I can comment very quickly because what I really enjoy here is we were, we are spending a lot of time to integrate all these components and to test that everything is working. But at the end, Johnny is showing a very simple demo. But I think at the end, this is a good thing because for the users, where everything is set in, set there, configured, it's really simple and it's just working. And even though the waiting here during the demo might seem endless, in reality, you don't you don't even notice it. It's almost immediately. And also, second thing, even though the technical integration might look really complicated, you need to realize we are just showing the whole stack. In reality, half of the stack is already there and you're just connecting the end pieces and that's it. So even the technical part behind it, when you have something already integrated, it's not that complicated. And of course, it was a lot of party collaborating on this demo. It was a wonderful experience and all the great people. So I'm really happy that I can be, I could be part of it. I, I would just follow that up with saying, you know, it was really interesting to me. One of my favorite parts was how during Johnny's demo, there was nothing to show in midpoint uh, because now the new connectors there, it does live sync and it just saw the change and moved it on down the chain. And there was really nothing to see there. And that is awesome because that wasn't always the case. Yeah. Well, I was, I, okay. going to just, you know, echo everything everyone said, like, yeah, okay, that's a pretty quick, uh, not too flashy demo, but that's good, right? Because you don't need it to be so extravagant. It just, it just works. Yeah, I was going to comment that um, Paul did a lot of the work in getting everybody together, all of the pieces, 
So um, you didn't have a chance to um, to present or say a lot, but uh, thumbs up to Paul. He did the work, a lot of work, <laughs> getting it um, integrated. <laughs> Thanks everybody for kind of sharing there some of your exciting moments of the project. And I, I, I know there's success moments and also just some of the struggles that go through any of these sort of integrations. So it's, uh, it's quite exciting to see at the end how everything fits together and that it's all working. Um, there was a question that came in, and this one is from Nicole, and Nicole knows a lot about how this works. But the, So this may be a softball question here that you all can help answer. Um, the question is, we use Shibboleth and, and the Internet to IAM platform integrated with the Incommon Federation to support this functionality. Could you talk a little a bit about how that helps give EdgeRome administrator access to Grafana from a single sign-on perspective? I don't know who wants to take that one. I think uh, Paul, I, I'm going to volunteer. <laughs> no, I'll start talking, but I think Paul, I, I, need I, you I, talk I can answer it. That's fine. Yeah, you talk. <laughs> um, so uh, there's an SP that uh, sits alongside Grafana. That's a service provider. It's a member of the Incommon Federation. And so um, it's part of the whole ecosystem and it gets uh, the attributes from your home uh IDP, it comes into our system. Our system first, uh, make sure you're registered. And then um, that goes through our proxy and everything. Sends you back to Grafana uh, with all of the username and everything that's curated uh, based upon your home uh, institution. And so you come right into uh, Grafana that way. Uh, we do uh, play around with the URLs a little bit to make sure you land in the right spot. But um, single sign-on is about as simple as that midpoint part of the demo. It just works. And so that's part of the beauty of Federation is that uh, attributes and information flows from your, your home institution. You don't have to remember another username and password uh, for this application. And it makes it a lot more usable when it's just one click and it just works. It also helps us with... When, uh, in our effort to externalize authentication and authorization, um, I mean, that's not something that we fully have realized yet. Um, but when, like I said, we were bringing all these edge room users in, we thought, well, this is where we're going. How do we get there? Uh, even if we start with this, you know, this group, let's start with them. Let's make them do what we're going to make everyone do. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Uh, but if we can, if we can get everyone into the IM platform, then we can leverage all these tools and then we can really start to, um, you know, to see the the potential of all that, all that, um, you know, externalizing everything like that. It, it really, it doesn't have to be to get to Grafana, right? It could be, oh, well, you're in this group. So that means you're on this mailing list or you're in this group and now you get to, you know, get this uh, card in the mail, <laughs> whatever it is. It's like, we, we can leverage that. We can, and then we can also take it away. So. That's pretty good. Thank you, everyone. I had, we had another question come in around um, a connector that points to the the GitHub repositories for Exclamation Labs, and I don't know if you you can talk about that and what's the relationship there, Matt. Maybe that's a question for you. Yeah, yeah. So the, for um, twenty six years, <laughs> that was the name of our company. Uh, so we have been around since nineteen ninety six. Um, and we decided to rename our company. Uh, it was about this time last year to provision I am to really reflect, um, you know, our company really just being a full identity management company at this point in time. So um, the, the Git, GitHub is still named with our old name, but provision I am is our new name, if you will. Thanks, Matt. Can you talk a little bit about what people can find at the repositories there? If you want to expound upon what's available there for you. Sure, sure. Stefan, would you take that? Yeah. Um, we have all of our open source connectors on that um, repository. So there's a lot more than just the connect Grafana connector. You'll find the base connector. You'll find um, some other connectors, for example, Zoom. Uh, we have a connector for Zoom. I think uh, more than 10 connectors are out there. So you could use them as a sample if you want to build your own connectors, or you could just implement it as it is. So. Great. Thank you, Stefan. Thank you, Matt. So uh, if you're interested in looking for connectors, you can browse the GitHub repositories at uh, 
provision IAM, but exclamation labs is the name uh, at the, of the repository or of the, the account, but that's for provision IAM's open source connectors. Great. There's another question that came in around Grafana use cases. And I don't know if anyone here on the panel can talk a little about a bit about that, but um, this specific use case is to pull in and look at uh, edge of logs. And so that's what that's what uh, we've kind of talked about here. But can anyone else on the panel talk about some other use cases that folks have seen for using Grafana? I, I would be happy to, because um, we're actually looking at it for some other things. Uh, what you saw in this demo is Grafana. Uh, the backend data source behind Grafana is Loki. Grafana is the visualization engine. Loki is the data storage engine. Loki is particularly suited for storing, strangely enough, log data. Uh, there are other data sources you can use with Grafana. One that's very interesting to us is Prometheus. Prometheus is specially uh, targeted at storing metrics data. So if you want to query applications and services to find out what they're doing, how busy they are, and getting metrics like that, you can store that in Prometheus and use Grafana as a visualization engine for that. Um, and if that interests you, that's a really enterprise use case. If that interests you, you, University of Texas at Austin did a really wonderful demo uh, a few weeks ago. I don't know, a month ago. Um, and uh, they have done some really amazing things with visualizing things in Grafana based on Prometheus data. That's a whole ecosystem that you can go read about. Um, at, uh, I think it's Prometheus.io, but uh, you can Google it. Uh, and they can look at like Amazon costs up to the minute and server processes and all this amazing stuff that you get out of that. So uh, that's some other uses we're looking at. I'm sure there's lots more. Yeah. In fact, um, Grafana has a lot of different data sources. I couldn't even list them all. There's more than 20 different ones. I've seen it being used, for example, to keep track of um, server metrics, all kinds of metrics, for example, memory, how much CPU is being used on a server or for a, you know, a set of servers that you might, a cloud of servers that you might use. So you just um, go over to Grafana. There's actually, um, they've been around for quite a long time and their visualization capabilities are, you know, I would say world-class. So you know, just check it out. You'll find a use, I'm sure. That's great. Thank you. There's another question that came in, and, and this is maybe a little bit broader in scope. This one is from uh, John at Marshall University asking around, um, does the Incommon ecosystem have plans to help organizations with, say, access reviews uh, to help consolidate what access an individual currently has assigned or inherited? And uh, this one sounds to me like a, a perfect candidate for uh, the universities that come and participate in a program where they can see how the TAP components can actually help their organizations. And I don't know if, uh, Paul, you want to speak to that one or if we've got maybe some others that can speak to the opportunities there? I'll give my answer to the, how I read the question. Uh, okay. So in my mind, if you want to know what a person has access to, I would say you're using Grouper, right? Um, because you can go in Grouper and you can tell exactly what a person has access to. And Grouper's got some really wonderful visualization tools. So if you wonder how did a user end up in this group that gives them access to System X, Grouper will display a visual of exactly how that membership and that application group maps back to some source enterprise group like students or faculty or, you know, on-campus people or whatever it happens to be. But that is the best way to really manage access is to have a centralized system that centralizes it. Otherwise, if you want to know what a user has access to, you have to go and query, you know, 500 databases and find out what if they're in there. I'm joking about that. But um, having a, a centralized repository is helpful. And in our case, it's Grouper. And so it's very easy to determine what someone has access to. Well, yeah, Paul, yeah, we'll Paul add, if, if I may, uh, Basically, this is the situation where the ITAP components overlaps because Midpoint is not only identity management, but also identity governance solution. And one of the main role of identity governance is exactly this, to answer the question, who has access to what and why? 
So with midpoint, similar as Paul, Paul explained it, how Grouper does it, you can check the access for individual users and midpoint will tell you if this is something that is managed by based on some rule or it was done as a part of synchronization and also from which system or if this is something that is managed manually and you can easily combine this with other identity governance features like uh, certification so for example everything that is man managed manually you will run a campaign so the responsible people needs to basically confirm that this is still active or maybe just remove the person for a given org group or role and again you can report this automatically so on and, so and that's a much better options. answer. That's that's a better answer because Midpoint's going to not only see the grouper group memberships that matter, but it will uh, see all the other roles that may have been assigned. Exactly. Thank you, Slavik, and thanks, Paul. I was going to also add that if, if you're interested in these components that we've talked about, say you don't have them set up on your campus already, there is training that is available. And so if you go to incommon.org, there's the Incommon Academy. And uh, within that, there are training opportunities where you can um, sign up, learn more about what this software uh, is, how to use it. Uh, so there's a lot of training opportunities available for these components that I think we may mention today um, that will give you a little bit of understanding around how the software works and then maybe how to apply it at your own university. If you're interested in maybe a little bit more in-depth conversation around that, there also is the Collaboration Success Program, where you get together with a number of other uh, schools that are trying to solve similar problems or trying to solve their own identity and access management problems. And that is a fantastic avenue to work directly with some of the developers that are in these areas and uh, supporting these components um, to help get your unique problems solved. So those are a couple of uh, uh, opportunities within the InCommon community and within the InCommon Academy to answer and to get at some of the solutions that you might be looking for, John. So thank you for the question there. I would add one other thing. We also have a workbench that's got uh, most of these components all wired together um, in a way that you can see how they might play together. There's co-manage and there's midpoint and there's grouper and they're all wired together to, you know, satisfy a certain use case. Um, if you join the CSP program, you get a workbench hosted in AWS uh, with a permanent host name that your whole team can poke at and see how it works. It's also available in a GitHub repository. You can download and run it. It really is just a Docker Compose file that launches something like 23 containers on your box, and they're all configured to do their thing. Really a quick way to get up and running and, and test some things out, Paul. That's... Fantastic. A great resource that's available there. And also, um, Nicole reminded me that if you're interested in learning more about this and uh, trying to understand the terminology and really get into this space, maybe you're interested in taking that leap from Edgerome and just understanding what federated access means for wireless. And now you're maybe interested in something for the web. How can you utilize federated access on the web? Or you just really need to want to really want to mature in the identity and access management space, there are conferences available. Uh, and Basecamp is sort of that entry level conference where um, you can join and go through all of this terminology and learn about these components and how they all fit together. So that is in June, I think next year. So look for those opportunities. There's plenty of resources available, both at the InCommon Academy and within the community and uh, conferences to attend. So lots of resources out there and people that are really I think, willing to share, which I love about the education community here. Um, one of the questions came in around the uh, workbench and whether or not it can be run on, on Apple devices, whether that has to be Apple Silicon or Intel. Can you comment a little bit about that, Paul? Yeah, right now it's it's just the x86, you know, Intel architecture. Uh, we're working on getting ARM containers for everything. We don't have them all yet. Uh, but we are working on it. We have heard that request a few times now. And, and so uh, it's, it's a little harder for us because we have to bring up all our tooling to be able to test and do all this other stuff under ARM architectures. And we don't all have ARM servers sitting around everywhere. So uh, other than our Macs, uh, but we're working on it. Uh, it will happen uh, eventually. No. Um, uh, and I don't have a guesstimate, but it will be 
two or three months at least. Well, if you, what about with the um, XM, the X86? Will it work there if your Mac is um, not ARM? Yes, that works. It works on both interchangeably on Mac and Windows as long as your Mac's Intel. But if it's uh, if it's ARM, then yeah, it won't work. And, and you do have to give it a little bit of memory, as you might imagine, with 23 uh, containers running. I think we had to up the uh, uh, on Docker for Mac, on my Mac, which is Intel. I had to up the RAM for Docker up to like 12 gigs or 10 gigs or something like that to get everything to run. But it, it actually runs fairly well and it's pretty responsive. Thank you, Paul. Thanks for that update. And also just thanks for the workbench. Um, sounds like that's a really useful tool for people that want to try things out and uh, see how they all work together. In a production environment, you're likely going to have a lot of this infrastructure deployed in multiple places or in different places. But uh, just having an easy way to spin up the workbench and test that all out would be fantastic. So thanks for developing that. And we'll watch for more updates as you continue to develop it. All right. I don't know if we have any more questions, but uh, I just want to uh, say thank you to everyone for participating today. Um, it's been a, a really great session. I, I appreciate all the work that's gone into this. And as I mentioned before, part of the uh, Edgerome Advisory Committee and just beginning to watch the expansion of Edgerome. And now we get to hear all the work that's going on behind the scenes that supports that. So really appreciate all the work that you all have done. And thanks for sharing uh, what you've been working on with the community so that we can uh, see and, and also um, the value that you're contributing back to the community by making a lot of this available, uh, whether it's the connectors or whether it's the new features with the um, configuration wizards and, and how all those pieces fit together. Thank you so much for sharing that with the community. With that, I, I think I'll turn it back over to April. Thank you, Brett, um, and thank everybody um, again for a great presentation this afternoon. Many thanks to Matt, Johnny, Stephen, Paul, and Slavic um, for sharing all of that great information with us, and to Brett for moderating, uh, as well as to all of you who attended, uh, posted your questions, or just listened in. We very much appreciate you being here today, and also special thanks to Susan and the rest of the Internet2 meetings team who make it possible for us to bring uh, I Am Online to you each and every month. Uh, before we sign off, I want to remind you again that the webinar was recorded. It will be posted on our website. You'll also receive an email within the next couple of days that contains a link to both the slides um, and the recording. Uh, there's a quick four question survey that will be available to you as you're leaving the webinar. Uh, please take a moment if you can to provide your feedback. We very much value that. Uh, lastly, we'll be taking a December off, but we'll be back in January with another great program for you. So please check your email on our website for those details. Thanks again, everyone. Um, and with that, we will see you next year for I Am Online. Have a great holiday season and rest of the day. Thank you.